Welcome back into Fox Walk Primitive. We're still here at the first day of Blade Show 2015, and I'm standing at a booth uh, that has gained a lot of popularity in the bushcraft community. Uh, their slogan is, they're the future of primitive, and that kind of piques our interest here at Fox Walk Primitive. I'm talking about Abolish Bush Tools, and I'm speaking with Steven Statton, who is the lead designer of the company, and we're just going to get a rundown of some of these unique designs. So, Steven, I, what are we looking at right here with the SRT? The SRT is really intended to be a one tool option. It takes the place of a small handbag, it gives you the ability to choke up so that you can do your finer work like you would with your traditional bushcraft knife. Um, we did design several features into it, like the anvil, which allows you to use a hammer stick to chop up or split larger wood. We also did what we call a dog bone pommel, which allows you to drive the tip in, like if you're busting out fat wood or trying to take a piece of chaga off of a tree. Um, we do our integrated fire rod uh, scraper, which when used in a reverse grip, it allows the sparks to be directed into your tinder bundle. So you get a hotter coal in where you're trying to ignite your fire. Uh, it does have a continuously curved cutting edge, so it cuts in much faster. It has more bite to it when you're working with flesh um, because it has what we call a pseudo scandy grind. It's a good woodworker also, but also won't dull down really fast when you are using it as a chop. So what kind of steel are we looking at here? We use a 1095 high carbon steel, and then we put a gun blue finish on it to help alleviate some of the rusting issues of the high carbon steel. And I'm guessing you shoot for 56 to 58 uh, mm -hmm. RC hardness? Yeah, we're 50, uh, 57 to 59 is our range that we find okay. acceptable. All right. uh, it's all professionally heat treated by Peter's Heat Treating, and we also have them cryo treated for toughness. So we get extremely good edge holding and shock resistance. Right. Uh, the handles are made out of G10. Uh, there again, we use it because it's impervious to water, most chemicals. Uh, we do an integrated fire bearing for your uh, bow drill set, mm -hmm. and G10 is one of the few materials that won't actually wallow out as it's used. Right. That's the other reason we love it. The trend for a uh, unique style blade is starting to grow, and um, I was I was saying to Stephen here that I think it's because when you step outside the box of what we would call the norm of knife design, we're getting designs that are just highly, highly functional. And everything he just told you is just a testament to that belief. So I would really like to see that trend continue. Uh, the bush tool was actually the first knife I ever designed. And there again, I really just felt like I got it right with it. It's hard for me to get away from it because it has all of the features that make this knife great, but in a compact package that's easy to have on you all the time. Right. Uh, we, of course, you didn't have the dog bone pommel. I came out with that later, but this knife really doesn't need that because it wasn't intended to replace a, a big axe. Um, but we do leave this back edge slightly sharpened, and that's so that you can scrape out bowls or spoons. Um, there again, we have our trademarked uh, jewel flashing points, uh, the multi-position handle, which you can choke up on. The anvil also gives you a handhold if you're working with flesh or pods. Yep. Uh, it has the axe top handle, so you can come back here, especially if you have a lanyard, to get more chopping power. Uh, there again, our original fire bearing, which does go all the way to the metal. Uh, and that's the reason that ours don't wallow out or wear as the time goes on. Uh, the full scandy, uh, or sorry, pseudo scandy grind that we do. Uh, it's a 15 degree followed up with a 30 degree uh, secondary bevel, so it really toughens up that edge and we get extremely good. Uh, this knife, uh, this is just one of those knives that uh, when you see it on the internet, you see it in pictures, it seems like it's huge. It seems like it's a massive knife, but it's really not. I could see this knife being real comfortable, almost as EDC, but definitely on the trail. Uh, this would be a marvelous trail companion, in my opinion. Uh, and you mentioned you mentioned that you have a, a back, a rear grip for chopping, and and let's bring it real to the audience for you know all the chopping debates that go on and on and on. As the designer, what is what is the ideal radius of 
wood that you would intend this knife to be used for? Three to four inches. Three to four inches, That's like wrist size. Exactly. And actually smaller is what I tend to work with and I work with dead materials. Yeah. When you're really into bushcraft, it's more about conservation of resources. Where you're not using everything in an area where no one else can go back in there. Exactly. If you're using the small stuff, it's easily replaced. That's what the old campers call squall wood. It's easier and to find, it's easier to replace, and it's easier to process. Right. And when you're building that shelter, after you drag 15 foot long sticks that are that big out, yeah. after you've chopped them, you wore yourself out for the day. I can build a shelter and I'm good to go afterwards. And, and there again, for the batoning especially, yeah. this is really your sweet spot. And the main reason that this one is used for batoning is to get to that dry inner wood for your tender. Or I do primitive bows also, and I tend to do long bow tops, and they're about an inch and a half to two inches wide. So I can split all the way down. But if you try to do a five inch piece, you're going to bury the knife in it, and it's not going to release there again, if, you're, if you were able to take down a five inch tree, you've got an axe, and there's a way better way to split one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and that goes back to what we were saying about a unique but very, very functional design. Um, when you see unique designs such as the Habilis tools, uh, they're kind of off-putting at first, but I encourage you to try them. And, and, and as he's been discussing, these knives are designed with skills in mind, not just taking the knife and, and just going and thrashing something with it. That's, that's, that's not what these tools are designed for. That's not what a, a, the WSK philosophy is all about. It's, it's about utilizing every space of this design for a purpose and to suit a skill. And Hablis is doing a wonderful job of that. These are, these are brilliant designs. Um, let's talk about the Trapper. I, I, I hear this one being talked about an awful lot on the internet. Right. Uh, actually, it's more of a, probably our most traditional pattern other than the Nesmut. Um, it's one of those where we wanted to offer people a chance to use one of our knives without going to something that was out of their comfort zone. And it really was intended to be a transition tool where they kind of go, it's a really great made knife. I'm willing to try these new techniques. Going back to uh, this pseudo Scandi, uh, being it, it's a sharp edge, it'll get the job done. Uh, myself, I'm not a huge fan of straight Scandi knives, but a pseudo Scandi, is a, a, a different ballpark in my opinion uh, and, and of course I'm talking about ease of maintenance and the fact you I, to me I can get a pseudo scandy sharper than a, than a straight scandy right. um, for film maintenance it's absolutely the way to go yeah a true scandy is extremely sharp but they're intended for working with soft wood yeah. and that is their only really purpose I guess I should yeah. say but when you add that secondary bevel you add all that strength to the edge yeah. And you've taken away the need to sharpen the entire flat. And again, you're going to get a short blade where if this was a higher saber or a full flat, I can see a lot of users being afraid of breaking the knife. But, I mean, you can see all that stock coming up to that tip, and that knife is going to be very, very, very stout. Uh, I would take this into the woods, and I'd beat this thing with rocks, and I, I wouldn't worry about breaking it. The other thing that we love about the pseudo scandy versus the traditional scandy or most other grinds is that after you've sharpened this with your secondary bevel so many times, you've changed your dynamics. Yeah. But you can put this back on a flat rock and sharpen it just like a traditional scandy, put your secondary edge back on, and you will you can basically use this knife until it's gone. Yeah. And the same is true with the bush tools, or with a lot of knives, the further you go, there's just no way to re claim that knife. Once true. it gets to a certain point, it's no longer maintainable. That's very true. And let's talk about the nest mode. That is the granddaddy of outdoor knives. It that is. That pattern has been around for well over 100 years. Uh, uh, I, I was saying recently uh, that I've never really been a big fan of the nest mode design, but I am warming up to it more and more all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, a, it's a great camp knife for processing food especially vegetables and meats, it's wonderful because it has a continuous curve just like any good chef's knife would. Mm -hmm. It's got plenty of belly so you could work with a raw animal or you know, to skin it without being scared of damaging the internal organs. 
Um, it does give you a lot of that tip control for opening up an animal. Yeah. Um, for doing feather sticks, splitting small wood. It's just an all around good campfire knife. If you pair it up with a tomahawk or a nice small, like they call a boy's axe, yeah. it would be rare that in a camp setting you would ever need more. And that was true of, uh, <laughs> I'm forgetting his name now, uh, his three part kit. Right. Was, Washington Sears. Was yeah, Nesmo. yeah. Who, who went by Nesmo. Yes. Uh, and, uh, that with a double bitted axe and a two bladed pocket knife were his three piece kit. Yep. And there's many modern variations like we have a friend who carries one of these with a modern tomahawk and a leatherman tool and that's his three piece kit and with those three pieces you'll be hard pressed to find a task you can't perform right, right. and this one here is 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 got modern style to it but it's a throwback to a very very uh original nest muck design and i really like this uh this almost worn cliff tip on it. I'm becoming a fan of the Warncliffe tip more and more every day. Uh, the longer, basically we wanted to do a lighter version of the Trapper without just doing a thinner still version of it. So I did a more streamlined handle on it. And there again, it was really intended to be more for women and youth, so it does have a smaller handle profile, but it still gives all the utility that we get with our continuously curved edge, the choke up uh, choil. Uh, we still put the fire bearing in everything we do. Um, it, it's a little lighter. It's probably four ounces oh, yeah. lighter than the oh, yeah. trapper. That is much, much lighter. Uh, and there again, if you're looking for something to do camp chores with, not do your heavy wood busting, your uh, taking animals apart, great knife. And for small game, it's wonderful because basically once you get them opened up, you peel them in. The, the first thing I think of uh, in, in the game process in regard when I hold this knife is fish. That is the first thing that came to mind is processing fish. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm betting it would do a marvelous job. Uh, it's got some real nice choke ability to it. The ergonomics are there. And uh, he mentioned that it, that it would be really good for, uh, for women and uh, younger, younger, younger kids. Uh, scouts might consider this this knife and I happen to have one with me and I might let him handle this and see what he thinks of it in a smaller hand um, and we have the next would be the feral hunter I see here yes the uh, feral hunter and the nomadic hunter they are basically the same knife just with a different length handle and uh, we do a different wrap on them also just to add a little more beef to the feral hunter uh, they were intended to be basically spear points. You know, right. Earlier I said don't use one unless it was made for that. Yeah. Everything about these was engineered to be a hog hunting spear point. Uh, they're long enough to get the penetration behind the uh, shoulder bone right. to hit the heart. And uh, I originally started with the Nomad where it gets you that good deep penetration. And we had some people who wanted to use them as neck knives, and that's when we developed the feral. Oh, just that's, to give them an option. That would make a fantastic neck knife, as a matter of fact. I like to point this out, because there's a lot of people out there doing spears now mm -hmm. that have never used a spear, apparently. But if you notice, mine curves completely in. That's yep. so there's no snag point. Once it goes in, you can take it right back out and reclaim your weapon. Yeah. And if it comes at you, you've got a second chance. If this is hooked or straight, you're going to lose that knife until that animal dies, yep. or you may lose it forever. Yep, that is that is a, that is a, that is a very good design aspect right now, there. For a harpoon, that's a fantastic thing to yeah. have. But for a true spear, you, oh, you want it clear. back. Exactly. Uh, the luck and what is luck standing for? Mm -hmm. That's the light utility camp knife. Light utility camp knife. And basically, my wife likes all of my big knives, but. Being a woman, she has small hands and not as much body strength. So I wanted to make something that had all the utility of my bigger knives, but on a very small platform that would be comfortable for her or children, other women, or even men with small hands. Right. But there again, we did the choke up choil. And as you said before, we cut it in deep because yeah. we want it to be a true safety feature. Right. Uh, Generally, people who are using smaller knives or even big knives in a clumsy situation like you might 
with the SRT, the more locked in you are, the less chance there is for a, an injury. Exactly. Um, but we did our traditional drop point on it. It still has the curves of a good kitchen knife and uh, all of our other styling features that will allow you to extend the handle, use it for uh, gathering materials. And I mean, it's lightweight. I mean, there again, we've got the eighth inch stock. I mean, if you're gonna go smaller, might as well scale down the thickness too. Uh, but it, I mean, you got almost the full thickness all the way across the backbone here. So it's plenty strong. And one thing I'm gonna point out about these deep choils on the, on the Habilis tools, is a lot of a lot of people complain about a choil in the shallow choil because their fingers are too big and they start cutting oh, on the tip. That's not going to happen on these habilis tools. These choils are so deep. I mean, that is that's just not possible. I mean, I'm I'm already I'm at my knuckle and it's still it's just not going to happen. And my hand is a little big for this knife. And one of the other things that I did mean to point out. If you notice, I left a burr inside here. Yeah. That can be taken off by the, the owner. We mm -hmm. just choose not to do that because this is wonderful for stripping bark or dethorning briars if you're going to make briar arrows. So we leave that little edge in there. A couple of passes with a scotch bright will take it off, but I don't want to take something off that can't be put back. Right. So I give the owner the option of how they treat that knife. And it's going to do a heck of a job scraping a fire steel. Exactly. Oh, and you can get a stick this big and just pull that along it there's no need for a feather stick you have a bird's nest of right. really thin shaved material right and we do it with a kydex only at the moment just because kydex is about half the weight of leather so this total combined is about nine and a half ounces right which is easily in the everyday carry weight oh yeah that's that's a definite that's an everyday carry trail knife for sure for anybody really but for smaller hands specifically designed uh, thanks a lot. I really enjoyed the talk. Thank you. Uh, I, I really like your designs and philosophy, and I look forward to getting some use on some. Good deal. So thanks. Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Stay with us. We got more.